So good morning or good night, depending on where you are, and welcome to another joint album review of the Shield in a Couch. I'm your host, Hector, and again, I'm joined by Señorita Sabrosura. Hey, Señorita, how are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm good. And we're here to talk about the latest album by virtual band Gorillas, and it's called Cracker Island. It's right there on the back. So uh, we're here to, you know, give our first impressions, talk tracks, and obviously give it a rating at the end of the video. So, Señorita, you can start off us uh, because this is an album that you recommended. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just told you to listen to it. Uh, I was curious about your opinion, and I was curious to listen to the album because uh, previous Gorillas I like. Um, this album is definitely not what I expected, but I enjoy part of it. Uh, for me, it was super pop, like Gorillaz went all pop, sing pop uh, with this album. Uh, but it has some replayable moments, uh, some entertaining moments, and some songs are more enjoyable than others. Other songs, like, uh, they're not so, uh, they're forgettable, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I blame you <laughs> for making me <laughs> listen to this. Uh, so I gotta be honest, I didn't listen to this album until today. But I listened to it on re I listened to it like four times, and okay. uh, every time I was trying to see how I felt about it, and I was like, "Yeah," I, because I remember when they put out Clint Eastwood and Feel Good Inc. That was like really, twenty years ago, something like that. <laughs> it's a, you think like, "Yeah, Gorillaz is not that old." Yes, they fucking are. Like that was like at the beginning of the two thousands, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember because Gorillas, for people that don't know, is the brainchild of uh, Blur's uh, frontman. I, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, Day Damon Alvarez. He was the yeah. Blur frontman. And he reinvented himself with this new yeah. band. Yeah, and I was reading that this band holds the Guinness World Record for the most successful virtual band ever. Mm hmm Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's been successful, and the, to me, when they started, like the first albums, they were more like an alternative electronic hip hop, like yeah, type of style with some trip hop to it. And I enjoyed, I I love Clint Eastwood. That track to me is my favorite from them. Uh, so I had I hadn't listened to Gorillas that much uh, in a long time, but when you told me, yeah, let's review this album, I listened to it, and yeah. Uh, it it is a not it's not very cohesive album. No. I, I feel I feel like I was listening to do different records sometimes. But you know what I was thinking? Uh that right now people like they don't usually listen to a whole album and the new generation, the, I think this album is made for the younger generation, like we're old now. <laughs> and uh Kids the, uh, today, they, they listen to the albums on Spotify, on iTunes, and they just listen to one song and that's it. Like And and if you take one song, you can listen and that's okay. Like I think that's why it doesn't make sense. And the music too, like it's so different from all gorillas. Yeah, I can just imagine the comments now. All <laughs> farts yelling at the Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> you music damn you yeah and uh for me it, it sounded like more like a uh taming pala mgmt and a little bit i don't know if you remember lmfao that band lmfao was that like yeah, a boy band? The, the party rock anthem la, um sexy and oh and yeah uh, sexy and i know i thought you were talking about a band <laughs> called lfo which was no, like a boy band lmfao or something like oh, that yeah. they're terrible <laughs> yeah i think they just had like two two yeah they had the sexy and you know it and and uh, the party rock anthem yeah yeah, terrible music, but yeah. So some songs like remind me of that 
<laughs> music. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a strange album. Uh, also, I think it's way too long. Uh, but well, the, the it has like but a it, deluxe edition on Spotify. So well, not, if you listen to the deluxe, it's it's longer. Yeah, so I don't know how many songs does the <laughs> the, the, the regular. Have. I think it's just like ten songs. Uh, let me check. So what's the last song on the non deluxe? Because that's listen... not thirty seven minutes and twenty nine seconds. So the last song is uh, the last song is Possession Island with Beck. You know what? And they should have kept it at that. Like uh, the other, I listened to the deluxe version, which is 53 minutes. And uh, yeah, like since I listened to that one, I can talk about some tracks. Uh, but, but it has the, are... the, uh, the same songs. <laughs> uh, no, there's a song that's not, uh, there's a song there that's not uh, not in there. But yeah, let's let's talk. Okay, so our first impressions of this album, as you can tell, is like there's mixed feelings with this yeah. album. Uh, so let's talk tracks. What were your standout tracks? Okay, well, I like the Cracker Island. I think that's a single that came out last year. Uh, it's not my favorite, uh, but I think it's a great intro. Like I, it's very energetic to start the album, and it gave me hope. Uh, last year, like oh, this is gonna be a good album, like very energetic. Um, uh, but no, uh, I like the Thundercats contribution in this track on the backing and the bass, like very prominent bass. Like I like that. I'm gonna sound very old, but. When I when I saw Thundercats, I just thought Thundercats, Thundercats. <laughs> uh, and I think they moved to uh, Gorillas moved to Los Angeles, so that's why they have like many collaboration with with people from LA. Yeah, there's a lot of collaborations on this album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they usually do a lot of collaboration. Like no one says no to them, so they include everyone. Yeah. Um, and speaking of col collaborations, I really love uh, Oil with Stevie Nicks. Mm. Uh, I I I felt like it works the contrast between Damon and Stevie Nicks' voices. Uh, like it it keeps the energy very high from the opening track. And and it felt like Damon Albarn like he wanted to sing uh, at the Fleetwood Mac. Like it yeah, has that like, vibe. Yeah, Stevie Nicks is just a classic singer, and uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's the second track on the album. Mm -hmm. uh, so, a, any other tracks stood out for you? And then uh, another of my favorite it was uh, "Silent Running." Uh, I don't know who is uh, Adele Omotayo, but I I I love the the voice there. Like uh, Adele sings beautiful here, and it's a very synth pop. The track, uh, it's catchy and it has like very memorable instrumentation and melody. Nice, yeah, yeah. Uh, if if I can continue, new goal, uh, that's with Teng Impala. I, I I have so high expectations, but like I I feel underwhelmed with that song. Like I I love Teng Impala. I love Gorillas, but it's like um, it, it's not a bad song. It's just okay. Yeah, of course, and Senorita, of course, you can continue. This is <laughs> our, our 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 review. Uh, because we had we had a comment on the mansion video that it didn't <laughs> let you talk. So uh, uh, it uh, this song I like the drums, I like the Kevin vocals, but I but like I expected a little bit more. I don't know, maybe because it was Tame Impala. I have no no idea who the fuck Taming Pala is. It's an honor being a year old. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to talk about the elephant in the room. The, the bunny. 
Tormenta uh, featuring Bad Bunny. If you want my honest opinion, this is not a gorilla song. This is a no. Bad Bunny song. This is a Bad Bunny song featuring gorilla, not the other way around. And this is a gorilla's album. And but I think it maybe it works. Maybe uh, I don't like Bad Bunny. I I I, I can't admire everything that he's achieved and everything that he has done. But that's not my cup of tea. That's not my type of music. But when I listen to the song, is this is not a gorilla song. This is a Bad Bunny song. Right now, Bad Bunny is the the number one artist in the whole world, the most streaming. Like Gorilla said, okay, I want it for the numbers because you know everyone is gonna listen to that song. Yeah, and like you, I thought that 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 song could have been. On, on Bad Bunny's last album, Un Verano yeah. Sin Ti, because it has that vibe and it, it it feels more like it's a Bad Bunny song and Gorillaz is just along for the ride. I felt the same way. That's I sad. actually, uh, uh, last year, my musical tastes uh, were tainted <laughs> and I got <laughs> to listen to Bad Bunny and now I can't get it out of my head. Uh, but yeah, he's he he's catchy. He does something great, and I thought it was a catchy track. But again, I the elephant in the room. I still I think it's a bad money song, featuring gorilla. And, 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 and if and if you don't believe, uh, the producer is Tiny from Puerto Rico. The Tiny who Tiny Tunes. Uh, uh, no, no, tiny. It's another, another producer. So what well, another... Puerto that, that that producer, uh, and 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 I know they keep saying like, oh, uh, gorillas wanted to experiment with reggaeton. That, that's not reggaeton. That's more like trap. Uh, yeah, it's more electronic because Bad Bunny's last album is more electronic, like danceable than reggaeton. Yeah, but he's like trap, it's not reggaeton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he has a mixture of different things, but yeah, that mm -hmm. song in particular. Uh, I'm and surprised. I feel like uh, the song like was gonna start, and it never started. Like, I don't know yeah, if you get you know, it. Like... Yeah, it started like Aurelius, and then by Bunny goes like, hey, 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 hey. You can see. I think that's. And it, it, I feel like the song, song never started. <laughs> That's his intro for. I thought it was interesting, but you know, I'm very surprised that you haven't mentioned the track with Beck. Oh, <laughs> okay. That song, I I never knew it was a Beck song until I read it. Like I, I, Beck is like very his voice yeah, is very was, I want, down yeah, I want to there. Discuss. Yeah. Like if you listen to the music, like okay, he's present there in the instrumentation in the music uh, and the melody, but his voice, like I don't know where is it. Yeah, to me, it was like a lost opportunity. And, and and that's not one of my favorite songs. You know why? Because I'm tired since the pandemic began. Like everybody using the same uh, lame line. We we are all in this together. Like stop, do something new. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it's a, it was a missed opportunity uh, with Beck. Uh, I think Beck, that the, Beck out is of the... super good. Like Beck is like a uh, really good. Uh, he's a music uh... chameleon. Uh, uh, yeah, and and he plays a whole of a uh, lot of instruments. Yeah, he, he's multi instrumentalist. Like, take advantage, and they didn't take advantage of that. Yeah, so I, for me, with the tracks, I think that the best uh, guest vocalist that was used here was hands down Stevie Nicks with Oil, because you could you could really listen when it's her, and it mm -hmm. sounded like yeah, like Damon wanted to be in Fleetwood Mac for a day. So yeah, yeah. I think that's the best one that works. Then you have songs that are like, they don't go nowhere. They're like super slow. Like, for example, the tired influencer. I'm like, yeah. what the hell is that? <laughs> uh, well, you know, the, 
the album is a concept album. I didn't know that until today. It's a concept album, and they're uh, talking about like the internet, and uh, it, 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 I think it is about like Murdoch's uh, starting a cult. Okay. Yeah, so uh, they're working that team through the songs, but no, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, but other songs that are forgettable, Baby Queen, Tarantula, Skinny Ape, they're just like... Eh. Skinny Ape, like, it starts really good, and in the middle, it gets to a, it, it converts to a LMFAO song. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fail for that, and... I listened to the deluxe edition, but there were some other songs that were in there. Like, for example, there's a cult, a song that's terrible called Captain Chicken. Mm -hmm. It had some chickens on it. <laughs> and when I was listening to this song, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> like, like I, I can see why they kept it like for the deluxe edition because it's it's terrible. Uh and yeah, uh that answer that. Yeah, Tama, uh, I think Silent Running with the Adela Ye Omotoya. I didn't know who she was, but I thought uh, that was a good one as well. Uh, the, the the starting track, Cracker Island, I think it starts the album on an upbeat uh, note. I'm just bummed that it wasn't the Thundercats. <laughs> but yeah, like it's, it's an uneven record. So... Uh, what are your final thoughts and your rating on this one? Well, like I said, in general, it's not a bad album, but it's not great. I'm sorry for those Gorilla fans that are defending the album, but uh, they could do better. But maybe they're doing something for the, like I said, for the younger generation. And it's not bad, but I feel underwhelmed. And I still can't believe Pitchfork compared Bad Bunny Boys with Frank Sinatra. <laughs> what? Yeah. If you read a uh, Pitchfork review, they compare Bad Bunny with Frank Sinatra. I can get over it. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking Frank Sinatra is rolling in his grave right now. Yeah. <laughs> Many well, times. <laughs> does Pitchfork know that Frank Sinatra didn't use autotune? <laughs> I'm sorry for the Bad Bunny fans. I'm sorry for the Sinatra fans, but the, no, no. Yeah, I think Bad Bunny is catchy, but if you compare him to Frank Sinatra, there's something wrong with your ears. Uh, because that, no, come on, please, people. Yeah. Uh, so, so, what was like your final score? Not a bad album, but not great. I think I'll give it a six. A six maybe it will grow on me because I, there's some songs like I listen to more like today and I'm like oh I like this one a uh, little better but I don't know for now it's a six maybe it will grow it will change but it, I don't know <laughs> yeah so for what about me, you yeah I, I'm not a huge Gorillaz fan I, I can listen to some singles here and there and I listen to this album all the way on repeat to the deluxe edition. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, every time that I kept listening, uh, uh, the, I I know I don't like an album when I'm listening to it and I'm bored and I'm like, oh, when the hell does this end? Because like, it's there, very repetitive. Yeah, it's very repetitive. There was just like a few standout tracks that I liked. And I'm sorry, I enjoyed, I think one of the ones that I enjoyed the most was the Bad Bunny song. <laughs> And it's not even oh, a, yeah. and it's not and that one, and I think the obviously the one with Stevie Nicks, uh, mm -hmm. that's the best song hands down. I don't know who Tama Impala is. I've I've read the name. I'm sorry, I'm not down, kids. I I, <laughs> I don't I don't know who he is. There's a lot of. I think another of the downside is it has a lot of like uh, guest vocalists, and sometimes it that's that can be bad as well because is it really Gorillaz or is it more of a collaboration album? And yeah. the, when the best songs on the album are the ones with the collaborators and the ones that are just Gorillaz are the worst ones, that, yeah. 
Like they needed those people for, to make the album better. It's like, like with the last Ozzy Osbourne album, I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it because it had guest vocalists on it. The guest vocalists made the album and the guest vocalists here kind of like redeemed the album a little bit for me. Mm -hmm. So you gave it a six. I'm going to give it a five out of 10. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a tale of two albums. No, and, I, and I think the uh, the album st starts good and it goes declining. Yeah, I also didn't like a lot of like the song placement. Sometimes I thought they were on a high and then they dipped too low. So I think the the song placement made it like a harder listen to me. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, Gorilla fans, but it's a five out of ten for me. And I listened to this album like five times today. <laughs> to prepare for this so uh we want to know uh what do you, do you think about gorillas cracker island what are your favorite tracks uh best vocal uh, guest vocalists on it and why and if you like the videos that we're putting out do not forget to subscribe and do not forget to give us a like to me and senorita sabrosura and uh probably next week we'll pick another album to review <laughs> together uh maybe this time i'll pick one since you picked this one <laughs> but That's i don't funny. know what, yeah we gotta see what's coming out so uh remember to subscribe to senorita sabrosura as well and until next time people this is hector the shield on a couch senorita sabrosura and we'll see you right here on the couch thank you and good night <laughs>